So maybe you're new to begonias and want to find out what all the fuss is about, or perhaps you've a few already in your collection and want to try some unusual varieties. In this video, I'm going to show you seven varieties I've been growing both in the greenhouse and in the house. They're all stunning plants in my very unbiased opinion, all very different, but also fairly unusual in that you just don't see them turning up very often. And what makes them even more attractive to potential growers like yourselves is that I've had very few issues with them growing either in the house or in the more challenging greenhouse environment. So what you don't want to do is spend all your savings on something that looks great when it arrives, but then days later the leaves begin to drop off and the decline sets in. So I'll be showing you some tried and tested varieties, tried and tested by me of course, so that you can avoid that fate and buy plants that not only look fantastic, but that are tough and resilient into the bargain. How do I know? Because I've been growing them and still have the living plants to prove it. Let's take a look. <laughs> And we are in. So I'm filming this in December. It's very cold outside. There are overnight frosts and snow. But all the begonias I'm showing you today live here in the greenhouse or in the house and are coping admirably despite the minimum temperature of 12 degrees Celsius. That's not to say that over the course of winter they won't eventually begin to show some signs of cold stress, in which case I'll simply take them into the house for a warm up. The order that I'm showing you them is what I consider to be rareness, the rareness factor. That is my own opinion on how often I see them up for sale or turning up in YouTube videos. So it's entirely subjective, I realise that. You might order them differently from where you live. Let's get into the plants. So starting with Begonia Bowerai Zumba. This is so far my favourite Bowerai hybrid. If you've seen a better one, then please tell me in the comments about it. Oh, I know all about tiger paw and I actually have one in the house too, but I'm yet to see one with so much patterning, so much colour variation on the leaves as the Zumba. This has been growing happily both in the kitchen and now back in the greenhouse while I have a change. Next up is Begonia Black Knight. I only potted this one on about a month ago, but Begonia Black Knight is definitely my favourite of the moment, an honour which can change at a moment's notice, I might add. Just take a look at these leaves with the starry night patterning, almost like the Milky Way splashed across the night sky, if the stars were all pink of course, but I'm sure you can see what I'm getting at. No sign of cold stress whatsoever, in fact, quite the contrary, it's thriving. Third plant on show today is Begonia Solid Silver. This hybrid has the potential to become a huge plant with dinner plate leaves, but a slug put paid to that a few weeks ago. That's the problem of growing in a greenhouse. I cut it back to a single leaf and then launched the slug into the field next door, but I'm happy to say that despite the onset of winter and the attentions, the unwanted attentions of the slug, new leaves have returned and it's on its way again. So next up I'm going to have to delve into my archive of video because Begonia Luxuriant is a plant that is actually an ex-plant for me. It's dead, yes. So how did it make it to my list? Well, the beautiful palm leaves, the scented clusters, the stately growing habit. If you're a long time follower of the channel, you'll know that it thrived for me for several years, but alas, while I was away on holiday, a relative drowned it and it didn't recover. But they're very cheap to replace in the UK. I can pick one up for a few pounds and no doubt I'll get another one one day. I usually see plant deaths as an opportunity to grow something different, but I may well come back to it. So for me, it required no special attention. It thrived in my greenhouse conditions and it grew so big, I had to continually chop it back to leave room for other stuff. Great plant to try if you want to make a statement and add some architectural structure to your collection. And honestly, very few people will believe that it's actually a species of begonia. So number five is Begonia melanobulata. Now, when I first acquired this species Begonia, I didn't see many of them around at all. But recently, I think people are cottoning on to this quite bizarre talking point of Begonia. I'm also seeing it for sale more often too. It looks impossibly difficult to grow if looks are anything to go by, which clearly they're not, as I've had no issue with this at all. It seems really happy in the warm or the cool temperatures and is continuing to throw out these gloriously weird leaves even in the depths of winter. 
So my next specimen is another species. There's quite a few species in this list, actually. This is only a small plant, and it's known as Begonia raja. It's currently hidden away out of the glare of the grow light. Many begonias are colour changes, depending on conditions. Colour changes in the leaves, of course. And this is one that shows its very best leaf patterns and colours when it's in a shaded spot like it would be in its natural habitat. Many folks grow these in terrariums, probably in fairly high temperatures, I expect, but as you can see, it's fine even down to the 12 degrees of my greenhouse and growing steadily, but nicely for me here in the winter. So my number one rare plant today is Begonia arachnoidea. Rare because it took me forever to find this and I only managed to find one particular seller for it in the whole of the country. There may be some others, but that's all I managed to find. So yeah, for me, it's rare. So this is Begonia arachnoidea, the spiderweb begonia, so-called because of the web-like patterning, which shows up both topside and on the underside of these glorious leaves. Now, this is no trick of the hybridizer. This is a species plant native to just one area of Southeast China. That's probably why it's rare. Common knowledge will have you growing this plant at 24 degrees Celsius and above in an enclosed terrarium, or you'd be forgiven for thinking it would die. But as we often discover, common knowledge is frequently wrong. In its native habitat, it does experience a colder period in the year where it can actually get close to zero, although frost will kill it. So as you can see, this is borne out by the specimen I have here, still growing through the winter. That's not to say it won't grow bigger and more quickly once the temperatures get a little bit warmer. You know what? I could have chosen more than just the seven. If you enjoyed this, then please tell me in the comments below and perhaps I'll take you through some more of the begonias from my collection. And also tell me which was your favourite. Do you grow any other varieties we can add into the mix as being unusual to find? Subjective, I realise, but easy to grow in many environments. And if your interest in seeing different begonia plants isn't yet satiated after what in this video then this video not sure which side this video up here will take you through 18 begonia varieties i was growing over in the hothouse at the time of filming i'll see you on the next one bye